Good morning and welcome to the CEO Collaboration Circle. As you may have noticed, we are on a new platform. We're using Zoom and we had to kind of change because we were having problems um, getting our host on, our guest on, and that just wasn't going to work. So we had to take a quick hiatus and come back full. But we come back in full force and we're here with Callie Cole and I'm so excited to have her on. Um, so let me just tell you what the CEO Collaboration Circle is all about. So the CEO Collaboration Circle was created for business owners. It was created for ongoing business owners to really understand how to run their business. Because one of the things I have learned from owning my business from for 17 years is there's a lot of information about startups. There's a lot of information out there about how to start a business, but there's not a lot of information about how to keep your business going, how to come up, overcome the bumps and hurdles that a lot of us have to go through. And I think it's really important to understand that we may understand the basics but there's some things that you have to get into the intricate stuff that you need to know that just isn't out there for small business owners and so that's what the CEO collaboration circle is for it's for business owners to come together to learn from each other and to grow um, our businesses so again I'm really happy to have Callie here because I met Callie and I was instantly drawn to her because not only is she really smart but she really knows her stuff and she's the owner of the sales fix um, and really what Callie does is she teach you how to sell and that's a skill that a lot of business owners some of us are naturally good at and some of us are not some of us need a lot of work and to understand how to do it and how to do it more effectively so I really thought it would be great for Callie to come on um, to work with us about how to be able to sell better um, and more effectively so thank you Callie for joining us today well, thank you, Shahara, for having me. Uh, yes, and I, I, I absolutely love Shahara, just everyone that's listening. She is awesome. <laughs> She's one of those people that you meet and you just gravitate to her energy and her spirit. So thank you, Shahara, for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. So, Kelly, why don't you um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and, and what you do? Well, the name of my company, again, is Sales Fix. I am a sales strategist. So what I do is help small business owners increase sales and revenue. And I help them in five ways. I help them through client acquisition, through client relationship management, through sales training, through um, Im the implementation of operational processes and systems so that they can be more efficient as well as staffing. So I look at it from a comprehensive point of view. I don't just focus on marketing because it's like, okay, once the phones start ringing and you get those influx of phone calls, well then now what? What processes have you enabled or, or enacted so that you can continue business as usual, just better, right? So uh, I look at all of those things. And then also, you know, finding the right person for the right position. And that's a, that's a problem that a lot yeah. of small business owners have. That, that ton turnover rate is exponential. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. So we need to work on that. But uh, yes, and then sales, period. <laughs> sales presentations, how to deliver a pitch properly. So all of those things I help small business owners with. And I've been in sales and marketing and retail for as long as I've had a career, which is quite some time. So it's been a while. That's really great, um, Kelly, because something you said that struck me is that you, it's, it's not just about marketing. And I think that that's something that a lot of business owners really need to understand that marketing is a big umbrella, right? And there's various different aspects of marketing. And um, sometimes we learn that the hard way. I know I did not understanding what those various different aspects are. And even if you don't master all of them, you need to understand them. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that that's something Thing that's really important um, in that aspect and in sales I, I look at it and please correct me if I'm wrong I kind of look at it as kind of that last end of the marketing right where you've got your branding you've got you know your message out you've got the website up you've done all of that stuff and now it comes time to closing it comes down to really talking to those people to give up their dollars is that what sales is you know what, for me, again, being a sales strategist, I guess I'm biased, but sales for me is the beginning and it's the end. It's the alpha, okay. omega, it's the A, it's the Z. Because you market with the intent of selling something, right? But in order to market, you have to sell who you are and what you do. You're essentially selling your brand. 
So the first part of sales is introducing yourself to a potential client or potential buyer. And then they have to sell who you are. Before they even purchase your goods or services, they, they have to be sold on who you are, what your brand uh, signifies or represents. So selling is not just prior or after marketing. Selling is, is prior to it because we have to start selling before we even sell an actual product or service. Well, that's really eye-opening. Thank you. I, I never really thought about that, but I, I, you're right. You know, it is, it, it starts from the beginning and that's very good. So tell us about how, you know, for those of us that maybe not find that that's our strong point. And, and again, I'm just going to kind of throw something out here because I don't know. So I want you to teach us. <laughs> <laughs> is, you know, is there a difference from when you're selling products where it's something that, you know, somebody might pick up or whatever versus selling your services? Is there some differentiation between that or is that the same type of thing when you're talking about selling in general? I think it can be more challenging to sell intangibles, right? So right. as a sales strategist or as a business consultant, we're not necessarily selling something, something that they can hold. Well, we are selling, quote unquote, uh, our results, what I can do for you. So sometimes that is a more challenging sale because people don't have, it's not something that they can go home with. Yes, we can give them marketing materials and brochures and a business card and, and our, our packages, you know, and, and let, it, let it look all nice and pretty, et cetera, with the price points, et cetera. But ultimately, we're selling intangibles. So, yes, uh, for us, I think, or people in that service realm, it's a little more challenging because, number one, that first sell is now you have to sell yourself to that person. So we know in sales that people buy from people who they like and trust. So the first sale is make, make yourself likable. And, and be a person of integrity. That's right. going to be number one. So when you have a product, if I'm just selling t-shirts or cupcakes, it's a little different, right? Because people can taste the cupcake, they can look at it, they can see, they can smell it and figure out, hey, is this something that I even want to purchase? Is it something I'm interested in eating? Or a t-shirt, oh, I like the material, it looks good, I like the colors, that's a little easier. But as a consultant or again, someone in the service industry, you have to sell yourself. You are the brand. Mm -hmm. So that's yes, so true. different strategies. Absolutely. Yeah, that's 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 so true, and I think it's important to to understand that um, too, because I think, especially as a consultant myself, um, understanding that is a little bit more difficult, and getting, and especially when your your concept or what you do is not um, extremely, you can't really. Uh, articulated in a way where you know it's A to B um, that there's a process involved and really kind of getting people to understand that process that takes um, some time so speaking of process um, what does that sales process look like for you what are the things that a business owner needs to kind of take into account when we're talking about getting to sales and 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 being better at sales just as far as the pitch part as far as the presentation I'm going to say or is that what you're talking about? Whatever part we, we whatever okay. part you feel like. <laughs> There's so many aspects, you know, yes. <laughs> to sales. But let, let's start with just selling yourself. Selling yourself um, first. You are the brand. If you're a small business owner, guess what? There is no big brand and no Steve Jobs or Bill Gates to hide behind. You are the brand and the brand is you. So first off, look the part. Look the part. When you're going to different events, look like whatever you say you are. That's really important. I see so many times where people have a branding problem. They're not branding properly. The business cards aren't a representation of who they are. They really aren't a representation of who the business is uh, or what the business does. So work on your brand, definitely. Make sure that you work on the brand. And number two, I would say is clarity. Be clear on the products and the goods and services that you offer so that you can quickly and efficiently let people know what you do. No one wants you to ramble on and on about what you do because you sound confused and then you make them confused and then they're not gonna buy from you anyways. So make sure that you are clear. Clarity definitely is the key. Yeah, and I think that's important because, um, and I, I would that be kind of classified as messaging? Would that be what you would classify that, that portion as? Definitely. You make sure that your messaging is clear, it's concise, and you are not confused by it. So clear, concise, and, and totally clear, uh, 
it makes sense to other people. It has to be logical. It has to go through a logical flow. So whether you're talking about developing or formulating your elevator pitch or something as a little more extended as like a sales pitch to a company or to a customer even, just make sure that you are very clear as far as that message is concerned. Yeah, and I think um, too consistent because I, I, I was working with someone in messaging and I'm, I'm going to be talking about this later, um, not today in a collaboration circle, but you know, in my emails and my blog posts um, that I realized what I do is kind of complicated. Um, it's not complicated to me, I understand it, but it's complicated to sometimes to people that don't understand strategic planning and don't understand strategy, that there are multiple parts and that there's not just a kind of a I do A and then B happens, that there's a process to it. Um, and that, you know, sometimes that process can become a kind of tangled weave and it's hard to get people to kind of understand that. And I realized in that, that I, that was just part of my messaging that, you know, what stuff is hard. It, it's, it is what it is, you know, and I can't tell you that it's going to be simple. And I think part of that messaging is when you're talking about being clear is understanding that what it is that you have, whether it's hard, where it's easy, whether it's, you know, whatever that it is that you are able to clarify and say, this is, this is it. Um, and make that clear. Right. So then moving on to messaging, right? You got, you got your branding right, you got your messaging right. You know, what's next? What, what comes after that? Well, it could be a whole lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just so much, right? But okay, so branding is done, the messing, messaging is, is good. Um, I'm going to say again, make sure that you have systems in place to be efficient. Make sure that you, you know, again, as a solopreneur in some cases or a small business owner, a lot of times you are doing a lot. You wear so many hats. You are accounting, you're customer service, you are the salesperson, you're, you're, you're everything. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to start using technology, technological resources that would allow you to automate a lot of these processes. Um, it's important to start delegating and then evaluate. You know, automate, delegate, and evaluate. It's really, really important. Again, as a small business owner, you want to scale. Most of us, we want to grow. So right. you can't grow if you're doing everything yourself. There's just no way around it. So it's important to start setting those pieces in place so that you can begin to grow. That is your objective. Yeah, and that's really important um, because I think those processes that you have to have, especially in the marketing process, I'm learning that myself, that there, there's got to be um, an easier way, right, mm -hmm. to, to deal with those things right. and to understand it. And no matter where you are, right, no matter if you have a brick and mortar in terms of getting people through the door um, and having regular communications with your your, your the purchasers and your clients and things like that, that you have some system about how you do that. Um, that's, that's important. But then it comes to the point to where, right, especially for those of us in consulting, and I'm, I'm going to change it up a little bit and kind of say, okay, let's talk about consulting service businesses and then talk about product businesses, because um, we do mention there is a different product process in there. So let's talk about the, the consulting portion of it first or the services. Mm -hmm. uh, versus consulting so you've got your people they hear your message they like it they they click on it or they come in for a consult they do whatever they need to do what is that next step to get them to close what is the 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 thing that you have to do and i and i realize it may not be one thing i realize it may not be as simple as a b c d e mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um but i think that a lot of times people lose um in that closing cell, right? They lose in that conversation. Right. So how is it that they can be better at that conversation and win and get people to come in? Okay. And close? Couple things. I see so many times where in that close, the person is there, you think that they're going to buy, et cetera. There could be two reasons or multiple reasons why they don't buy from you, but we'll focus on two of them right now. I believe in the Sewell protocol. That's the S-U-A-L. Sometimes you just need to shut up and listen. There are, <laughs> you know, there are some people that will talk themselves out of a sale. Mm -hmm. As a salesperson, you need to be doing more listening than talking. Because that's the only way that you're going to find out what that person actually needs. Mm -hmm. So you need to listen. 
write it down, whatever it is that you need to do so that you can actually focus, give that person your undivided attention. At once they're giving you the information, it's not about your sales pitch right then. Just listen, because that way you can determine how to align your products and services with what they actually need. Sometimes we just have a, a, a tendency to push what we want to push, the products or services that we want to push, but maybe that's not what they need. So again, it's really important to listen. But also, even before then, it's important that you are marketing to the ideal client. A lot of times I see people, their conversion rates, meaning that they, they don't sell as much as they need to because they're not marketing to the right people. So those people might not be their target market. Those people may not be people that can afford to pay for their goods and services. So you're wasting marketing dollars and wasting your precious time marketing to people who are not going to pay you. So it is important from the beginning that you market to the right people that want your goods and services and not only want them, but can afford to pay for them. And then that second part, is there like a litmus test, so to speak? <clears throat> and I know I realize I'm oversimplifying it, but we only have 30 minutes. So, I <laughs> <laughs> so um, but is there like a, a litmus test to say, okay, is, you know, are these the right people or are they not? Is there something that you can put in there to kind of test whether or not these people can really move further in what you're doing um, in terms of, you know, your sales process? Well, you th and that's where target marketing comes in. So you want to market in areas, for example, let's say you do have a consulting business or some sort of service-based business, and your target market are people who make over $250,000 a year. Well, guess what? You're not necessarily going to target certain areas with a demographic that makes $50,000 or less. Right. I mean, all of that information can be found doing a little research. Use your Google, your research assistant, Google. Everyone has that same research assistant. And within minutes, you can find out how to target market in certain areas. So if you want that person that, be, that might make more than 250000 a year, professional, educated, et cetera, then maybe um, market in the River Oaks area or in the Galleria area or in the Energy Corridor or in the Woodlands. You know, so there are certain zip codes even that you can hone in on specifically so that you can, again, find, be strategic and find the right people uh, so that you can find the best client for you and for your business. So, yes, it's all about strategic marketing. Yeah, and that's 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 really helpful. So let's move on to to those that have the brick and mortar, the shops. Um, and not to say that consultants don't have that, but you know, talking about the people who have products um, that they sell, that maybe you have to get people in the door, um, mm -hmm. or maybe even online buys. Um, but specifically, if we're talking about people who are trying to get somebody through the door, what is it that they need to do? How do they need to focus on getting people in um, to even look at the products in the first place? I think social media is great for consultants as well as people with brick and mortar stores or, or product based companies, right? I think social media is awesome. It's a great way to connect to the world. It really is a global medium at this point. So we have the ability to do business not only with people within Houston or within Texas or within our nation, but also throughout the world. So I think social media is a great way to get people in the door. You have to know again your audience. So for example, if your target audience are, are teenagers or people from 18 to 25, then as far as social media is concerned, you have to know where they are. That might not be Facebook. My daughter who's 21, she's like, mom, you know, old people, only old people are on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm trying to reach that demographic, Facebook is not it. But I may want to put our ads in on Instagram or on Snapchat because that's where those kids are. So you have to reach them where they are so that you can get them in the door. So social media definitely is a great opportunity to do that at a relatively uh, affordable cost as far as marketing is concerned. Yeah, and I think that's really important, too, and to be able to be visible on, on social media, which is it's sometimes harder than, you know, some people think. Some people are naturally good at it. Mm -hmm. Some people, like me, you know, I, I'm quite the introvert, so having conversations on social media is more than a notion for me. It's not, you know, <laughs> as easy as it seems. Uh -huh. So, you know, for me, I think it's, you know, it's hard, but some people, you know, just have a hard time with that. But I think it's important because I, I know of business owners especially around my neighborhood that I didn't even know were there. You know, somebody just said, invited me to go somewhere and I, this wine bar. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know this was here. How long you guys been here? And they were like, well, we put stuff on social media. And I'm like, 
I've never seen it, you know? Um, so then if it's not getting out, if it's not getting where you need it to be, um, what things do you need to change? I mean, what other avenues um, do you need to do to start getting more people through the door? More than social media, networking is also a great opportunity. Now with networking, it's not just about going to every, each and every networking event that's out there. You have to be strategic with everything that you do because you have limited time and you have limited funds as a small business owner. Mm -hmm. So you want to put yourself where your ideal clients are located, where people are, are putting skin in the game. So again, free networking events are okay. All right, but you don't want to limit yourself to free networking events because a lot of times those people who go to these free networking events don't necessarily have the money to invest in your products or services. So if you think that you're going to go there to get clients, sometimes you are really wrong. <laughs> you might go there, you might get great information from the speaker who is there possibly, but in, in most cases you won't necessarily get clients. So be strategic about the networking events that you go to. Um, also, befriend the, the actual workshop presenters and the organizers of those events because they many times have many connections and they can, that connection can help open doors for you. But then you can't also just think about yourself. It's not just about what's in it for me. It's about how you can help other people too. So it's all about reciprocal relationships and networking is about forming relationships so that you can help other people and they can help you too. So network, go out there, be strategic, and then follow up with those people that you've met. So networking is also another way to get people in the door. That's, that's really helpful. And I think that's um, important um, to really understand. Now, talking more about this sales process um, and, you know, having people, I know a lot of times people will say, well, you know what, I'm not really good at sales. That's not really my strong point. I really don't have time. So now I'm going to think about outsourcing it, right? I'm going to either hire somebody to be a recruiter for me or a developer, so to speak. Um, I had a friend ask me about that um, the other day, um, she was looking at maybe she's doing some consultancy and was thinking about hiring a business developer to come go and you know, uh, bring in clients for her. And what do you think about that? Is, is that a good idea? A bad idea? Uh, where, do you, where do you stand with it using outsourcing the selling process? So to speak? I think again, as a business owner, it is really important that you hone your sales skills. I agree as far as I understand you want to focus on your strengths and outsource the rest typically. But right. when it comes to sales as a business owner, this is your business. You need to have a really good grasp or handle on sales. I'm, I'm a firm believer at that point. You need to fake it till you make it. If you need to <laughs> act like you're the best salesperson in the, in the universe, if that's going to help you to be that person until you actually learn to adopt those traits and characteristics, then start acting. But you need to figure out a way to, to hone those skills because what happens if you don't have the ability to outsource someone? What happens if that person that you've hired has now quits on you? Then what? What happens to your business then? So again, sales is one of those things where as a business owner, it's really important that you get that, you really get the foundation uh, for that and, and learn how to sell to the best of your ability. You can do it. Everyone can do it. I think that's really important um, because I tell you, you know, I, I tell everybody, um, you know, marketing is not my strength, right? The whole, the whole, all gam the whole gambit. It's not my strength. Um, you know, um, that's just not where I excel. Um, and I've owned my business for 17 years and I still feel like I struggle. You know, I still feel like, you know, I'm not the best at it. There's other people that are way better than me, but I still consistently consistently work at it and you may not ever be you know the best sales person out there the best marketing person but you can get better right. um and that's really you know what what it matters is that you getting better um and so i remember several moons ago um that i took a, a sales course and it was like a little workshop and it was a very small group of people and it was really actually good because we practiced. Um, when we got to practice, um, you know, not only our sales pitch and get to say, you know, hey, we'd be interested in that and how to, you know, do some certain things. And I found that to be very helpful because I didn't know um, what, if anything I was saying or doing 
what was working or not. You know, you don't have a real test base other mm -hmm. than somebody saying yes or no. Yeah. Um, so that found that was really helpful. Do you think that it's important to kind of practice and, um, and, and work on what you're doing? And if so, then how can a business owner do that safely, like in a safe space to be able to practice um, their sales and, you know, working through a consult with a client or bringing people in or whatever they need to do? Well, I think that's a great point, Shahar, because so many people, small business owners, they put sales on the back burner as far as their sales skills. But there should be continuing education for sales as well. Because if you want a productive and lucrative and profitable business, then you have to hone your sales skills. So it's just something that is par for the course. It comes along with the territory. It is what it is. You just have to get better at it and practice makes perfect. So I, for example, assist my clients with sales presentations and, and their sales skills. But yes, getting maybe involved in a networking group um, that specifically focuses on sales or taking sales courses, those will help also. And they have some short courses. It doesn't necessarily have to be you know, a 12 month long course or something along those lines. It can be 60 days. But again, it gives you the opportunity to stand in front of a group of people and to, to get honest criticism and, and learn how to develop and become better. A lot of times, again, like you said, we don't know until we hear that yes or no from a customer. And at that point, we, we don't even know why they're saying no, because we're not asking, well, why did you right. say no? What's going right. on? Was it something I did? Was it something I said? And then sometimes they're not even going to be honest and tell us, well, you just sucked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's the reality. Some of us just right. do well in that piece of it, that whole sales pitch piece of it. So those are some things. Take some courses. There are online um, training as far as sales training is concerned. Uh, myself and other business consultants offer some uh, sales training and sales courses also. So the, the, the resources are out there. You just have to go out there and take advantage of them. Yeah, thank you. That that was very helpful because I think that's really important that the practice makes perfect, as they say, um, and really understanding it. And even now, like I said, sometimes I lose business um, and, you know, I think, oh, well, maybe it's because I'm not experienced enough or maybe it's because of this. And it may be a completely different reason. Right. Um, and you you need to understand what that is. And I think it's important to kind of put yourself in an environment to allow yourself to do that. But I think sometimes as business owners, we don't want to seem vulnerable we want to see you know we don't want to show people um, that we struggle in certain areas and I think it's important to be open I mean that's that's kind of the reason why um, I felt like something like this with the collaboration circle was important to have because no one's perfect right every business struggles in certain areas and whatever area you struggle in you should be able to seek help for it um, so that you can be better right you're only as strong as your weakest link and if you're the weakest link, then that's a problem. Um, right. So you've got to be able to, to do that. So I want to kind of take this last couple of minutes, um, Callie, to talk about maybe some business big, bigger businesses that have a sales force or they use affiliates or they use um, people to go out and sell for them. How do you get everybody kind of on that same page or to, to groom them to be able to sell for your business? Training. Absolute training, training and development. Every, even the mid-sized businesses, we'll, we'll, we'll even start with the small businesses, right? If you have any, any amount of employees, it's important that you train these people. You wanna duplicate yourself. So you have to train them. You have to train them on your expectations and the standards that you require as far as your business is concerned. But it all starts and, and, and ends with training and development. So whether you're a small business or you are a Fortune 500 company, it, you have to have a, an excellent training department that really teaches your, your employees on your business's culture as well as the expectations and standards that are required. Yeah, thank you. That that um, really makes a difference. And I think training um, matters for everything, right? It matters for everything that you do. Um, if you're not training your staff, there's a problem. Um, and I encountered this a lot of times with my clients when they're having, you know, the time turnover rates that you were talking about, Callie, um, that it's because of poor training. Um, and you haven't brought people in um, with the expectation that they're going to go from point A to point B, that they're going to get better. I think a lot of times with small business owners, we expect them to already have all these skills to already be able to do everything for us. And that's not necessarily the case. Even if somebody is really good at what they do, they still need to be trained. Um, and I think that that's something that 
we as small business owners really need to understand that that is part of the process that we have to do. So Callie, in these last couple of minutes, tell us how we can um, contact you. If anybody wants to contact you, how can they get in touch with you and, and what do you have going on that they can take advantage of your services? Well, um, you, they can reach my website. It's www.salesfixtexas.com, and that is sales, S-A-L-E-S-F-I-X-T-E-X-A-S, -S -E -S. so salesfixtexas.com. Um, they can also contact me at 713-446-6480. And as far as what I have going on, it's a whole lot. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I conduct small business workshops through um, the Small Business Development Centers through U of H. I also do uh, other workshops that I'll be presenting at the Houston Business Lounge, and I'll be posting that information on uh, social media as well as on my website. So if you go to my website, then I'll be posting those events at a later date. So yes, I'm always doing something. Uh, I'm always marketing, always trying to get out there and network with people and ultimately just trying to help the small business community to do better and make more money. Thank you so much, Callie, for being here. Thank you for taking um, the time out of your day to be here. This is a real resource, everyone. I really um, think that it is important for us to really understand all the processes of our business, all the aspects of it, and the things that, you know, even if they're working well, that we can do better. Um, and I think the sales process is one of those things that you can always be better at. Um, and that's some place where you can't say, oh, I got it and I don't have to deal with that anymore. You really have to um, continue to work on it because it always changes. And I think it's um, so important for us to be on top of our game in terms of sales for small business owners. So thank you again for being here. Next week, we'll be back, back on Zoom and you can come to the same link that you have um, and it'll be there for you. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week in the CEO Collaboration Circle. Again, my name is Shahara Rahm. Right. I'm a business law attorney and business strategist, and you guys have a great and wonderful week. Bye-bye.